Hi guys, on every dish that I create, there's always one question that a lot of you are asking. And when I say a lot, I really mean a lot. And what would be the best way to answer that question? Well, I thought, why not show you? To answer this question, my fiance and I hopped in a car and drove 10 hours south to a small village, Saint Léonard de Nonblanc, near Limanche. Here lies the workplace of Jules Le Coquet and Jean Le Crom a porcelain maker that has been making the finest porcelain since 1824. From the minute we enter the workplace, there's one thing you directly notice, and it's the amount of skill and passion that every single person has. It's really incredible to see. I've been working with their porcelain for many years now, and it was an amazing experience to see how it's made. In this workplace, they use two different ways to make porcelain. There's a method for plates and dishes, and there's one for bowls, pots and cups. Both start with the same paste. This paste is made from four elements. Sand, feldstar, water and qualin. It's the qualin that gives the porcelain its pure white finish. After mixing for many hours, the result is a liquid paste called slip. It's then left to rest, which allows a finer shaping when modeling the paste. Now for making plates, the paste needs to be a lot thicker, so it's pressed between cloths to remove any excess water and then it's shaped into these thick tubes. The paste is then portioned into discs and placed on handmade plaster molds. A machine then rotates the mold and applies the paste, imitating the potter's manual labor. After it's been shaped, the plates then need to dry for around 2 hours depending on the size of the plates. This allows the removal from the mold. The plates are then transferred to the attic where they are dried completely. After drying, the plates are double checked for quality and then the edge is refined with a wet sponge. On each step, the quality is double checked to ensure the best porcelain you can imagine. Now for making bowls, pots and cups, they first need to make hollow plaster molds. Here they also make the plaster molds we just saw for shaping the plates. They start with a mother mold. This will be the mold for making all the plaster molds. Creating a mother mold can take months and it needs to be perfect or any imperfection will appear on the plaster mold. The mother mold is then filled with plaster and left to dry. Once dry, they remove the plaster mold and trim the edges. Both sides need to fit perfectly, otherwise the porcelain slip will leak out of the mold. Now that the plaster molds are done, they are transferred to the next step. Here the molds are filled with the porcelain slip. The mold absorbs the water and it's then assessed visually or by time whether the desired thickness is reached. After which the mold is emptied of its excess liquid. It's then left to dry before trimming the sides and gently removing it from the mold. Then it needs to dry for another couple of hours. After drying, the pieces are refined by hand before the handles and knots are glued to the shaped piece. Then they are refined once more before the first firing at 980 degrees Celsius for 16 hours. At the end of the firing, the porcelain needs to rest for at least 24 hours before moving it to the next step. This would be glazing it with RML. Before the glaze is applied, it needs to be cleaned because any dust will be shown once the glaze is applied. Now because of the firing, the porcelain becomes porous and it allows the glaze to stick. During the glazing process, each piece is dipped, one by one, in a bath of RML. It's turned and gently balanced so that it's completely and evenly covered. The glaze will give it a beautiful shine once it's fired for a second time. Everything is done by hand, and it takes months of learning to master the gestures. I also gave it a go, and trust me, it's definitely way harder than it looks. I was so afraid to drop a plate, but fortunately I didn't. I said it before, but it's really incredible to see the amount of passion and skill that these guys have. On these plates, a protective film is already added on the outside, so that only the inside and the bottom is covered with the RME. Once it's glazed, it gets a green stamp with the logo on the bottom and then it's cleaned to remove any unwanted glaze. 
Then a protective coating is sprayed on before firing it for the second time. This time it's done at 1400 degrees Celsius for 23 hours. The oven then needs to cool down for 10 hours before opening it and it still was incredibly hot. It's then moved so the next batch can be fired while it can cool down for a couple of hours. The porcelain is then ready to be decorated. Depending on the model, the decoration is made by a chromolography or it's hand painted. A chromo is a film of decorated motif. The hand painting is done with a brush. It's really an art. The precision and the skill for proportioning of colors are the result of many years of learning and practicing. The pieces are then fired one more time. For each color there's a different firing temperature. This between 800 degrees Celsius and 1200. Finally the last sorting takes place. The last of a long series of quality controls. During its manufacture, which lasts from 8 to 15 days, each article will have been controlled at each stage individually. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and for me it was an absolute privilege of visiting the workplace. Really, it was such an experience to see the amount of skill and passion in that small place. I already have quite a lot of plates and walls and I love working with them, but after seeing and visiting the workplace, I'm gonna have like so much more respect when using them and yeah, it's just very humble to see the amount of sheer work that goes in each single piece. Um, so like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Next week I'm going to show you how to use these plates and bolts uh, when you're creating your own dishes and I'm also going to show you some plating techniques. So if you stick around for that, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any single videos. And as always, bon appetit.